Honorable Member for Calgary, Bindapur. Merci beaucoup, Madame. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. On April 26, I asked this question in the House. Mr. Speaker, because it was a mister at that time, Madam Speaker, inflation hit 6.7 percent last month, and I wish that would have been the worst of it, Madam Speaker. Unfortunately, it went to 8.1 percent in June. But at that time, it was a 31-year high and well above the Bank of Canada's predictions. Canadians are already struggling to pay their bills, fill up at the pump, and foot put food on the table. Unfortunately, Budget 2022 failed to provide any credible solutions, and with the extensive, unfocused spending, it is only going to get worse. The simple fact is that Canadians cannot afford this Liberal NDP government. When will the minister acknowledge this cost of living crisis we are living in and work on real solutions? Five months later, Madam Speaker, I wish I could say things are better, but they are in fact worse. A story published today by CTV News indicates that nearly a quarter of Canadians are cutting back on food purchases amid high inflation and that amid soaring prices at the grocery stores, a new survey has found that 23.6 per cent of Canadians have had to cut back on the amount of food that they are buying. This survey, as conducted by Dalhousie University's Agri-Food Analytics Lab in partnership with Cattle, was conducted between September 8th and September 10th and involved 5,000 Canadians from coast to coast. Madam Speaker, over the last year, 8.2 per cent said they've had to change their diet to save money on food. And 7.1 per cent said they've skipped meals, skipped meals, Madam Speaker, because of the cost of groceries. 24 per cent of Canadians are actually literally buying less food due to higher prices. And of that number, 70 per cent, Madam Speaker, are women. So it is highly likely, Madam Speaker, that children are also impacted by what's going on with this high inflation. The survey also found that nearly three quarters of consumers were changing their buying habits in order to snag better deals at the grocery store. And of the respondents, 33.7 per cent said that they were using more loyalty program points to pay for groceries in the last year. In addition, 32.1 per cent said they were reading flyers more often, and 23.9 per cent said that they were using more coupons at the grocery store. Well, Madam Speaker. Apologies to the Honourable Member, but I would like to ask the people who are in the outer courtyard to please lower the tone of their conversations. We can barely hear what's happening here in the chamber. The Honourable Member for Calgary, Midlipur. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for that uh, consideration. Madam Speaker, today the job vacancies for the second quarter report came out of 2022, and the following was determined. Overall, average offered hourly wages increased 5.3 per cent to $24.05 in the second quarter, yet the consumer price index increased by 7.5 per cent in the second quarter. Madam Speaker, simply put, wages aren't keeping up with inflation. With the cost of food, bakery products increased by 13.6 per cent, sugar and confectionery by 9.7 per cent, fresh fruit by 11.7 per cent, and eggs by 15.8 per cent. Madam Speaker, I asked this government to find solutions for the economy. Five months later, it's cleared they have still failed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Finance. Uh, Madam Speaker, thank you. Uh, very happy to be here discussing this topic. I thank the member opposite for raising it. Canadians are seeing higher inflation rates and higher cost of living uh, in Canada and, and frankly right around the world as a result of many factors which include the war in Ukraine, global supply chain bottlenecks and global energy market uncertainty. Despite these challenges, Canada's rate of inflation continues to be well below that of the G7, the United States, and the OECD. I would like to remind my colleague across the aisle that our lower rate is in part due to the measures taken by our government, including in budget 2022, 
which put forward targeted measures to ensure that key expenses like housing, child care, and dental care would be more affordable for more Canadians. Prior to that, we lowered taxes for the middle class on two occasions, tax decreases that that member and their party voted against. Hmm. While we couldn't foresee a global pandemic or a war in Europe, when it comes to the finances of our country, Canadians can rest assured that our net debt to GDP is the lowest in the G7 and we've improved our relative position over the course of the pandemic. Our government is fully aware that Canadians are feeling the effects of elevated inflation, particularly at the gas pump and in grocery stores. But we also understand that inflation is a global phenomenon driven in large part by the lasting impacts of a once in a generation pandemic, once in several generation pandemic, and of course Russia's illegal invasion in Ukraine. While this isn't a unique Canadian problem, we have a good plan to make life more affordable, especially for those Canadians that need it the most. Our affordability plan includes a suite of measures totaling $12.1 billion in new support for 2022. We've enhanced the Canada Workers Benefit, which now supports an estimated 3 million low-income workers. We have increased OAS for seniors 75 years and older by 10% starting in July 2022. By the end of this year, we, we are cutting childcare fees in half. That will deliver thousands of dollars for Canadian families while investing in their children and allowing parents, more parents, to get back to work. In addition, earlier today, our government introduced legislation to implement new dental, housing, and GST credit affordability measures that are also part of our affordability plan. Now, the new Conservative leader, and I congratulate him on his new position, said that today's announcement prints cash. It's a quote. Let's be absolutely clear. These two pieces of legislation provide targeted relief for middle-class Canadians who need it the most. He says this is inflationary spending. Multiple economists including our former Deputy Public Budget uh, Officer and the University of Calgary's Lindsay Teds, have pointed out that this support, these supports for Canadians are not inflationary. The Conservative leader's solution to help with the cost of living are to make cuts to government programs without telling us what he'll cut. He's also encouraged Canadians to invest in speculative assets. Sadly, some Canadians listened to the Leader of the Opposition and have since lost their life savings as a result. A more responsible repo, uh, approach to governance and a more responsible approach to solving the affordability challenges of Canadians is required. Our government is continuing to focus on making life more affordable and we're continuing to focus on making uh, an economy that works for all Canadians. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Calgary, Midnapur. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I will point out that the affordability bill of 2022 has measures that are set to cost $4.5 billion. And of that $4.5 billion, $1.4 billion was previously announced in Budget 2022. This bill actually adds another $3.5 billion on top of the $53 billion deficit projected in 2022. Madam Speaker, a rent subsidy of $40 will not pay for a tank of gas, let alone help Canadians to afford a more secure place to live. And every province in Canada, Madam Speaker, with the exception of Manitoba, has existing dental support programs for children. Conservatives are concerned about the duplication of programs and interfering with provincial jurisdiction. In summary, Madam Speaker, conservatives are focused on fighting not fueling inflation and are opposed to any new spending. And I would encourage my colleague and his government to, to for any new dollar in spending, it must be matched with a dollar in